Back in the day, when I was doing physics, that there were two main branches of physics. There was um, theoretical physics, which uh, they didn't have any theorists where uh, in the physics department where I was. And then there was experimental phys uh, physics, which is what all the physicists that I worked with were. And so, of course, I... Uh, study theor uh, not theoretical. Well, I guess when you study it in the class, it's all kind of theoretical, unless you're in my class. But anyways, that the work I did in the lab, I was uh, clearly experimental atomic physics. Um, and at the time that we used computers, and the theorists used computers to help them. But over the years, that the use of computers has evolved to the point that computational physics is a, a third branch of physics. Um, it stands on its own. And so recognizing that is one of the reasons that I have decided to make an emphasis on using Excel and on vPython. Though the real scientists don't necessarily use Excel for these purposes or vPython for that matter that they are uh, similar to tools that are used. And what the research indicates to us is that the more we can give students uh, an authentic or a more authentic science experience rather than teaching about science, that the more you learn and the better appreciation you get for science. So here we are. You've got project one uh, that is called Soap the Moving Teach, and you're supposed to model what happens with the balloon during launch, flight, and landing. So I'm going to demonstrate how you can use Excel to help you. And so, if we come into an Excel, Excel spreadsheet, um, what I really wanted to do is to just highlight these, this row, that you can tell that I have time described as well as the position, velocity, and acceleration of both the horizontal and the vertical. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy that and put that into sheet two. And I kind of wish that it would automatically set up the formatting. Oh well. Um, no, I should have been doing it this way. That's my problem. So, I've got that. I'm going to put it into sheet three. And then I am going to endeavor to um, label each of the, the sheets. And on a Mac, I, if I just double click on the tab down there, that this will be the landing and this will be the flight and this will be the launch and so a critical piece of what we're doing involves figuring out what the initial conditions are and once you set up a spreadsheet like this that you can go back and tweak the initial conditions and so that we're going to assume that the time begins at zero, the position begins at zero. Um, if we're talking about the landing, that the velocity begins at zero. And we won't talk about acceleration quite yet, um, but there is an acceleration in the horizontal direction during the launch. And likewise, um, I have initial position and velocity of zero in the y direction. Um, I can see that my recording is starting to run out. So rather than getting cut off in mid-sentence, I will go ahead and stop this now and we'll continue on from there.